Megan's Insolence, written by Sridhanshu Eshachandra Mehta. About the poet, Sridhanshu Eshachandra is a Gujarati poet, playwright, translator, and academician. He is the president of Gujarati Sahitya Parishad. His collections of poetry include Odysseus New Halesu, Jadayu, and Vakhar. He has received many awards and honors. Among which the most notable ones are the National Sahitya Academy Award in 1987 for Jadayu, Denchitram Suvarna Chandrak, the highest award in Gujarati literature in 1987, National Harmony Award in 1996, the Padma Shri, the fourth highest civilian award by Government of India in 2006, and Saraswati Samman in 2017 for his poetry collection Vakhar. The title of the poem. The poem is titled Megan's Insolence. Megan in Gujarati means a mendicant or a beggar. Insolence means rude and indecent behavior. Megan's insolence symbolically means the insolence of a mendicant. Eshachandra calls the poet Megan a mendicant. Megan in the poem beseeches to live, to love and to write. The poem begins with the stubborn poet Megan expressing his desire to live. The poets are not a labor class and do not have a salary or regular income from it. So the poem begins with the poet's statement that it all began with Megan saying that he wants to live. The Gujarati literati were dumbfounded at this. They questioned the possibility of the statement. The young people who were clamored on one side on the fate of experimental periodicals and the elders who were rebuking the other side agreed upon one datum. That is, if the poet chooses to leave, he will have to quit the sanctum of literature. Megan too agreed upon this and he left. The moment he stepped across the threshold, a miracle occurred. Goddess Saraswati appeared from the niche and informed the king that she would follow Megan wherever he went. Goddess experiment, Miss Realism and Mr. Rhythm also came behind her and stopped him from leaving. They decided that the troublemaker Megan stay and rot in that corner. Megan, but after a few days later, said that he wanted love. So the literati took him to an impressive building in Apollo Street in the picturesque square. There was a secret chamber in the building under lock and key. The key was in the locker. They took Megan to the state bank's safe deposit vault and, as stated in the scriptures, brought a priest along to recite mantras. They handed one key to Megan and kept the other in the vault. Then, with the chant of glory to Ramachandra, Sita's spouse opened the locker. The allusion to Ramachandra and qualifying him as Sita's spouse in the ritual of entering into the literary locker is also noteworthy. Sita accompanied Ramachandra to the woods in his time of exile for 14 years, which led to her abduction by Ravana, who imprisoned her in Lanka. Rama saved her and brought her back to Ayodhya. Here also, Megan is about to enter the secret chamber and invoking Ramachandra to be his saviour. Thereafter, the literati asked him to accept their love. But the son of a bitch, Megan says, this is not love. What we see here is a satirical criticism of the literary field. Megan's conception of love is entirely different from the love that the literary society has constructed. The literary society has moulded it in a different way. The conflict between Megan's mind and the literary world is evident here. He cannot find a sense of belonging to the preposterous world. The literary questioned Megan. They asked, if this is not love, then what is it, you bastard? All the big wigs, prize winners, medalists have taken love for their stories, poems and plays from this very source. They argued with Megan for his claim that it is not love. The literati explained that there is no need to keep it in the safe vault if it is not love. They told Megan that he can use the chamber whenever necessary and return it and that it will never go out of style. They tried to convince him, saying that all the Victorian professors use it year after year and some of them have used it for 25 years, yet it stays brand new. 
But Megan says that he wants to live and that he wants love. So crazy Megan was locked up in the house of letters. The place has western style latrines. In the morning, everybody used paper. The poet is vehemently criticizing the writings of the period which blindly emulate the ways of the western world. He says that a lot of paper was needed and that the Sartarji from Times of India distributed huge rolls of paper which were left hanging there. Then all the literary big shots, old and new, put their signatures at the bottom of the paper after use and the contents would be published in periodicals or read over Agashwani. In the case of an upset after bad food, an entire novel could be serialized. On anniversaries and festive occasions, special numbers and anthologies would be brought out from this talk only. Megan did his work really well. He would do the job every morning and forget to sign. But those literature-loving editors would always be lurking around and they would grab a new poem even if it had been discarded and printed under the name of Megan, Poet Extraordinary. The poet says that there exist some ethics in Gujarati literature. Only rarely would they put their own signatures. No one would pinch another's poem. Megan got the state prize and five or six gold medals within a year. And then there were celebrations and felicitations. Every paper announced that on a certain date and day, a felicitation program for Megan, the part-time writers would take place with the following speakers and who the chairman would be plus a long list of well-wishers. Each one of them spoke very oratory. Someone mentioned Kafka, another spoke of Melarmita and still another of Narasimha Mehta. Franz Kafka was a German-speaking bohemian novelist and short story writer, widely regarded as one of the major figures of 20th century literature, who explored the themes of alienation, existential anxiety, guilt and absurdity. Stephen Mellame is a French symbolic poet and critic. Narasimha Mehta was a 15th century poet saint of Gujarat, notable as a bhakta and an exponent of Vaishnavite poetry. The poet continues that someone spoke of the love between a camel and a cow and each one had an anecdote to relate. Everyone revealed the auspicious and the inauspicious. At last, someone happened to remember. Let that swine Megan say a few words. The chairman was all set to press the bell saying, one, two, three, speak. And Megan, the dolt, the poor idiot, one pity sim, says, the same, what else? He says, and this after receiving the prize for poetry, says, I want to live, I want to love, I want to write a poem. So this is how the poem ends. And now we have some critical views. The poem, Megan's Insolence by Siddhanchu Eshachandra, is a hilarious poem of the sense of unbelonging in the literary world. The oppressive politics of a literary subculture are scathingly scattered, scathingly satirized as crazy Megan is locked up in the house of letters for two simple but terrifyingly subversive aspirations, to live and to love. He says that it is a Herculean task to be a poet and that he follows the beaten track. In an interview with poet Manudash, Eshachandra commented on the distinction between writing poetry and being a poet. In the process, he makes a vital distinction between a snug self-serving identity and a voluntary unbelonging. The language of the poem is also sarcastic and pungent with intrinsic humor. In his own words, the language of poetry runs counter to the discourse of authority. In this sense, to write a poem is different from the opposite of being author, being poet. In this sense, to write a poem is to be a rebel, to be an outcast. And that is as much of an aphoristic utterance about the whole business of belonging as one is likely to find. Thank you.